are giving honor to the Father of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he is worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be honored, and he is worthy to be magnified and glorified. I want to thank God just for another opportunity to be in his house today. How many people are just thankful for another opportunity? Lord have mercy. See, sometimes you just got to be thankful for the opportunity to show up. Lord have mercy. Thankful for the opportunity just to be present in the house of the Lord among family and friends and, and church members. And so thank you, God, for allowing us to come into your presence one more time. Listen, we do have a word from the Lord. But before uh, we get into the word today, I want to wish my brother in Christ, brother Stevie Jones, a happy birthday. Y'all give him a round of applause. Amen. It's his birthday today. Amen. And, um, you know, they, he, he, Ms. Chandra said he was on one. He'd been on one today. So I, I don't know what that means, but, but it's, it's his day, amen. So, so let him do what he gonna do. You know, with us men, you gotta let us do what we gonna do. But I, but I saw Ms. Chandra let him know, you're not gonna just sing one song up there, you're gonna sing two. It may be your birthday, but you gonna be, the Lord gonna still put you to work, amen. It's your day, but it's his day, amen. So thank you, Brother Steve, for all that you do for the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. Listen, we have a word, word, word from the Lord, obviously on last week, and I believe uh, many of you were with us on last week. We gave a message, or we really started a brief teaching series on the Father's will. How many people remember that? Amen. The Father's will. And part one on last week and on a Wednesday night Bible study, we talked about the shaking season. Amen. And uh, what we learned in the shaking season is that God will allow some situations and circumstances to shake up our life. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be some things and some people that are removed in this season. But it's also going to be some things and some people that remain. This was the word of the Lord on last week. He says, let go of the things that have been removed and focus on the things that remain. Do y'all got that? that? That was the general idea or the general principle of part one of the Father's will. Today, I want to go into part two. And if you're writing down, go ahead and say the Father's will, the shaping season. Amen. On part one was the shaking season with a K. Today, part two is the shaping season. And I want you to pay very close attention to this title because I was talking to my wife on yesterday. And how many people know you can learn something every day? Amen. Sometimes you just got to ask. OK, the, the, the Bible says, you know, the reason why you haven't received it is because you haven't asked. And a lot of times we feel uncomfortable with asking certain people because there's a learning curve. Uh, and we don't want to ask or embarrass ourselves because we don't want to let people know that I don't know this. And I was, uh, y'all know, she's an English teacher. She was an English major. And I was asking her, hey, what is the official term that is used in English to where you can have a word that is pronounced the same, but they're spelled differently and they have different definitions? And this is what she said. She said it's a homophone. OK, now she she said that and I felt some in a spirit because when I look at it it, it, it seems like it should be pronounced homophone. And so she was like, it's a homophone. And I felt it in her spirit. You better not go up there and mispronounce that word and embarrass me. So I, I hopefully I, I said it right. And, and so for today's title, we have what is called a homophone. Somebody say that with me. Homophone. So obviously part one was the father's will, the shaking season. Today is part two, the father's will, the shaping season. And obviously when I say will, on last week I was talking about W-I-L-L. -L, but today I want you to put a slash and I also want you to say the father's will, W-H-E-E-L. Y'all got that? Watch out. The father's will, like, like a wheel that you put on the wagon. So, so it is the father's will the shaping season. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 18. And there we're going to read verses one through six. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation today. And that is really one of the reasons why I have this iPad, because most of my physical Bibles are either the Christian Standard Bible, the New American Standard Bible or the King James Version. But I felt the Holy Spirit telling me that I should come out of the NLT, which is the New living translation okay so if some of y'all are old school and y'all looking at like well the pastor should have a physical bible look listen I, I got a couple of physical bibles but i felt the holy spirit wanted me to go to the new 
Living Translation. And that is why I got a little bit of technology up here. If you feel it in your spirit, go ahead and buy the pastor a physical Bible with the New Living Translation. I'm going to just put that out in the atmosphere. Whoever want to grab that blessing, amen. By giving, it shall be given to you. Whoever wants to receive that. Jeremiah chapter 18. And this is very interesting because this is what I want to call a familiar passage, a passage that even if you haven't read it, you've heard it before. But as I was thinking about all of my years of preaching and teaching the word of God, I can sometimes forget some of the messages that I've gave, but I remember the passages that I've come from. And I don't ever remember preaching or teaching from Jeremiah chapter 18. So this may very well be the first time that I have taught from this particular passage. We're in the New Living Translation, chapter 18 of the book of Jeremiah, and this is what it says. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop. Lord have mercy. Some of your translations may say the potter's house, and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found, watch this, the potter working at his wheel. Are y'all with me so far? But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Verse five, it says, then the Lord gave me this message. Oh, Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Yeah. We're talking about the father's wheel, W-H-E-E-L, the shaping season. In Jeremiah chapter 18, the Lord gives a message of instruction to Jeremiah. He tells Jeremiah to go down and take a journey to the potter's shop. And when you get there, I will reveal my word to you. It says Jeremiah sets out and he goes on this journey to the potter's house. And when he gets there, he notices at least three things in the house. Now, I need you to read very briefly write these three things down or at the very least set these three things in your mind. Jeremiah notices that there is a potter, there is a piece of clay and then there's a potter's wheel. Now, I need you to set this in your mind real quick, because in a minute, we're going to go over these in a little bit more detail. Jeremiah notices that there's a potter, there's a clay, and there's a potter wheel. Repeat those after me. A potter, a, potter. a, piece, of a piece of clay, and a potter's wheel. A potter's so he notices those three things as he enters into the house. And it says in verse 4 that Jeremiah notices that when the jar that the potter was working on did not turn out as he intended or as he had hoped, he would break the jar back down into a lump of clay and he would start over again. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in verses five and six. And it says, just as this potter has done to this clay, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So here we have that God is using an illustration or an analogy of God and his people, the people of Israel. And Jeremiah, who will be one of the major prophets of the Lord in the Old Testament, came and went on a journey or what I want to call, as we did in school, a field trip. The Lord took him on a field trip. And I just feel like that can preach right there. Sometimes you just got to get out your house because the field trip is going to give you experiences and it's going to teach you lessons that the classroom does not have the capacity to do so. Lord, have mercy. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor experience life experience life. So he goes on this field trip where God is going to teach him a valuable lesson. And we said that Jeremiah notices three things. Now, I need you to bear with me just for a minute because y'all know I like definitions. Amen. And so I was spending some time and I was looking up some of these definitions and you can just Google these. And, and one of the things that I, I figured out is that I had to piece a lot of it together. It wasn't one single definition that I could just use from a dictionary. I had to piece them together and what the interpretation of the Holy Spirit gave me. So here's the first definition. I just need you to bear with me because I got to set this message up. It says the potter is a person who is skilled and specializes in the design and development of shaping clay into various forms of pottery. Y'all got that? So that is the potter and what the potter makes 
can be used for various purposes. It can be used as a jar. It can be used as plates, as cups, as vases. It can be used as decor and floor tiles and musical instruments. So the potter, watch this, will dictate or determine the purpose of the clay. Do y'all got that? The potter dictates or determines the purpose of the clay. This is the second definition that I want to give, and I know I'm going a little bit fast right now, but just bear with me. The clay is a type of fine grain natural soil material that develops here it is plasticity when wet but becomes refined somebody say refined Refine. when put through a drying and firing process this is the third definition that i want to give the potter's wheel the potter's wheel is an instrument or a machine used in the shaping of clay the shaping also known to the potter as the throwing of clay is guided by the expertise of the potter now let me give you the analogy or the spiritual versions of those definitions as used in jeremiah chapter 18. god is the potter who specializes in the shaping of clay do y'all got that god is the potter who specializes and i feel it in my spirit that uh brother johnny campbell used to sing a song god specializes how many people know that god specializes in the situations and circumstances of life so it says god is the potter who specializes in the shaping of clay it says god's people are the clay somebody say i am the clay speak that over your life i am the clay god's people are the clay who go through a process of development and refinement and then number three it says the potter's wheel represents the will of god did y'all catch that the potter's wheel w-h-e-e-l represents the will w-i-l-l -L of god the situations and circumstances of life will allow god to develop us and grow us and refine us watch this into the vision of the part are y'all still with me right here i know we're going through a lot right now but we just got to set this up in jeremiah chapter 18 jeremiah walks into the potter's house and he notices at the least three things about the clay number one and this is our first point the clay has Potential. Somebody can confess that over their life and say, I have potential. So I need you to say it with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more boldness. I have potential. The word potential is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something useful, purposeful, and valuable. And just like this piece of clay, you have potential. Potential. I need you to just confess it over your life. I have potential. Because watch this, sometimes people may not notice or immediately recognize your potential. Mm, Lord have mercy. If you don't recognize my potential, I don't know what you're looking at. But sometimes, unfortunately, they may not recognize your potential, but it's not about what people see. It's about what the potter sees. Who with me so far? It's not about what your family and friends say and speak over your life. It's about what the potter sees. And I just feel this pulling in my spirit. The potter sees that you have value. The potter sees that you have worth. The potter sees that you have a purpose and an assignment over your life. I have potential that the potter sees in the midst of my life. Yeah. Sometimes, watch this, people will not see your value. And I just feel the Holy Spirit telling me to tell somebody this. Don't allow people's expectations or people's words to dictate how valuable you are to God. Amen. Mm, Lord have mercy. Have mercy people may not see everything. And here's the thing about potential. Potential is kind of like faith. We look at uh, things on the outside when our potential is on the inside. That's why the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And so the systems of this world will judge you based on what they see on the outside. They'll judge you based on what they see on a resume. They'll judge you based on what they see uh, about your background and about your experience and, and what's on your CV and all of these different things and, and how you grew up and when you grew up and what city are you from. And God says, I am not bound by the systems and the frivolous things of this world. Somebody need to receive that in the name. I am not bound by the systems and the frivolous things of this world. God can see the potential 
through your mistakes. Mm, I felt that. God can see your potential through your disappointments. God can still see your potential through every single thing that you've been through. God sees the potential that is over your life. That's why God, watch this, the Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. Mm, Lord have mercy. God doesn't care what city you grew up in. He doesn't care if you grew up in the suburbs or the projects as long as he sees potential. He doesn't care if you grew up in a mansion or a one bedroom apartment as long as he sees potential. He does not care if you grew up in Midtown or Africa Town, off Dolphin Street or Chin Street, as long as he sees potential. So God is saying, just come as you are and bring what you got and he will take the raw materials of your life and he will shape you and make you and mold you and roll you and fold you and tweak you and turn you until you become the masterpiece that he has designed for you to be. I have potential because it is not what you see. It's what the potter sees. The father sees potential in you. Lord have mercy. I felt that. Here it is. If you didn't have potential, you wouldn't make it on the wheel. I could have ran right there. Lord have mercy. Because I'm on the wheel. Now understand that the wheel sometimes may be inconvenient. The wheel may be uncomfortable. And, and when I'm talking about one of those old school wheels before electricity was, was invented, I'm talking about one of those kick wheels where the potter is using one foot to spin the wheel and he's using, watch this, his hands to shake the clay. The potter's wheel may be uncomfortable at times, but he's using it, watch this, for your good and his glory. Lord have mercy. Jeremiah sees that the clay has potential. The second thing that I believe Jeremiah sees, and we're moving right along, is that the clay goes through, here it is, a process. Mm. The first thing that he saw is that the clay has potential. The second thing is that the clay must go through a process. And I just feel like I got to parenthetically digress real quick and say, stop running from the process. That's for somebody right there. Stop running from the process. God says you're running from the process. It's two things that God says you cannot do in this season. You cannot run from the process and you cannot rush the process. Because if you rush the process, you're going to move prematurely in a season that you're not prepared for. Hmm, I felt that in my spirit. You're running and you're trying to rush. He says, for those of you that are running, stop running. You're looking like Flojo out there. You're looking like Gail Diva, Shelly Ann French. You, you, you're running. He says, stop running and allow me to put you on the potter's wheel. Now, when you're on the potter's wheel, you cannot rush the process. Tell your neighbor, you can't rush the process. Because he says, the process is for your improvement. The process is for your development. The process is for your refinement. So you must go through the process of the wheel spinning. And while the wheel is spinning, God says, I got my hands that are shaping. Lord have mercy. Somebody missed that right there. He says the wheel is spinning. And let's be honest, the spinning is uncomfortable. And over these past couple of seasons, it felt like our life has been spinning. It just felt like it's been going in circles. It's been spinning. That trial had you just spinning. That circle had you just spinning. But while the trial had you spinning, God says my hand was shaping. Lord have mercy. The spinning is helping you to be shaped and molded and developed into the person that you have been called to be. The clay must go through a process. And the vision and the purpose of the potter, listen, will determine the process of the clay. And, and I told you this before, um, on, on a couple of weeks ago, uh, I went to this youth event and, and there was all kind of men that were in different professions. And these men were there to invest in boys and young men. And they were showing them, hey, this is how to be successful in a career. And I met a guy by the name of Jack Jackson. He's a really good sports photographer. And this is one of the things that I learned from Jack. They were asking him all kind of questions. What's the best picture that you've ever taken? And you know how young boys, they always say, well, what's the best? What's your favorite? And, and Jack had to think about it. And I overheard a conversation that he was having with a young boy. And this is what Jack said. Jack said, I didn't bring my best work. I brought a few pieces that I thought were good, and then I brought a few pieces that I thought were not so good. Because I just don't want you to see what I have become. I want you to see what I've been through. Mm, Lord have mercy. I felt that in my spirit. 
You cannot, and, and, and if God is telling you to mentor young men and women right now, you cannot always show them what you've become. You got to show them what you've been through because the been through helps you become. Mm. The, the become is more about purpose, which they need, but the been through, here it is, is about process. And a lot of our young people, they're not just struggling with under, understanding purpose, but they're struggling to understand process. Yeah. So he says, watch this. You're going to have to get to a point in your life where you feel comfortable ministering to somebody, not just with what you have become, but with what you have been through. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The trials that you've been through, the challenges that you've been through, because the young people got to understand that you just didn't get good overnight. It took a journey. It took time. It took sacrifice. It took discipline. It took a process of growth, a process of refinement, a process of improvement to get to where I'm at now. And I learned this from the gentleman. He said, look, I'm not going to just bring all of my good pieces. I'm going to bring some good and some that I just started off with so you can see the process that I went to. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God says I have you in a process. And you own the potter's wheel. Mm, Lord have mercy. How many people just feel like they're on the potter's wheel today? You're in the wheel of the father. And he's stretching you. Lord have mercy. He's expanding you. Lord have mercy. He's shaping you. And he's molding you. And he's doing all of these different things. And sometimes, let's be honest, it feels uncomfortable. Because watch this. In order for the potter to shape, he must apply pressure. Yeah. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Somebody ought to put that in their notes right there. The father is applying pressure with purpose. Hmm. Lord have mercy. I felt that could have preached right there. The father is applying pressure with purpose. So he's allowing you to go through this season of pressure, this season of adjusting, this season of pivoting, this season of understanding how to, to learn from your mistakes and then get another opportunity to right your wrongs. He's allowing you to go through this potter's wheel, but he's saying, I'm putting pressure on your life so you can be prepared for the purpose that I have over your life. The clay has potential and the clay must go through a process. Somebody ought to confess that over their life and say, I must go through the process. Mm. You in the process right now. Ooh, Lord have mercy. You in the process right now. That's why it's uncomfortable. The process may not always be easy. The process may not always feel good, but the process is going to have you ready. Lord have mercy. And I'd rather be ready when I get to the next season of my life. I'd rather be ready and prepared for the promotion that God has in store for me. I'd rather be ready to do what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the heart of man. I'd rather be ready than unprepared for my blessing. And some of you, Lord have mercy, you're either running from the process or rushing the process and God says, that's why you're unprepared for your next blessing. Mm. He says, I, I, I can't give you the next blessing because you are unprepared. In other if I give it to you, you're going to waste it. That's why I'm allowing you to go through this season where you have a little bit because I'm testing you to see if you're going to be a good manager, if you're going to be a good steward. And he says, if you can do what I need you to do with the little bit, I don't mind trusting you with more. That's why he says your next season is a season of abundance, a season of more, a season of greater. But you got to be ready for the season. You got to transition properly. So the clay must go through a process. The third thing that Jeremiah sees is that Jeremiah sees that the clay serves a purpose. Hmm. Lord have mercy. The clay serves a purpose. So do y'all got those three points right there? The clay has potential. The clay must go through a process. And then the clay serves a purpose. Now when the clay has been formed... It now, watch this, serves a purpose of how the a potter intends to use it. Now, here's the thing that I believe that the Holy Spirit wants us to get out of this. You cannot compare your process to other people's process because, watch this, you have a different purpose. If, if, if you're a jar, you're going to be different than a cup. Does somebody get what I'm saying? If, if, if you're a plate, you're going to be different than a floor tile. All of, of them have been made by clay, but I cannot compare my process to your process because we have different purposes. So don't say, well, my process is harder than their process. 
No, 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 no. Don't compare because they got a different purpose. They got a different assignment. And you didn't determine your assignment because the potter determined your assignment. God intends to use you for his purposes and the process that you've been through has prepared you for the next moment in your life. I got to say that again. The process that you've been through has prepared you for the next moment in your life. God says you're going to be prepared for this next moment. You're going to be prepared for this next shift. Lord have mercy. See part three. I know I, I went prematurely right. But part three is about the shift of God. Woo, Lord have mercy. It's about you transitioning from the valley to the mountaintop. It's about you transitioning from where you're at right now to where you're supposed to be. I'm looking forward to my transition. I'm looking forward to when God shifts me to another level. When he shifts me and elevates me, I'm going to be prepared for the elevation. Because here it is, you're going to have to deal with different problems when you get elevated. You're going to have to deal with different people when you get elevated. So you might as well learn how to deal with the problems and the people at your current level. And when you deal with the problems and the people at your current level, it shows that God is ready to move you to the next level. Don't be so focused on next that you neglect now. Lord have mercy. So the, the, the clay serves a purpose yes. and, and you're going to be prepared for this next moment you're going to be prepared for the ups and downs of life yes. you're going to be prepared for the highs and the lows you're going to be prepared for the victories and the failures and you'll know how to celebrate the victories and bounce back from the failures oh i felt that in my spirit some of you are going to have a bounce back faith Lord have mercy. You didn't receive that like you needed to receive that. You're going to have a bounce back faith. In other words, when life knocks you down, it's just something in you. It's something that God had placed in you that, that, that gets you to determine and say, I'm going to get ready to bounce back. Yeah, I may be down right now. You might be laughing and looking at me when I'm down, but you're going to be silent when I get up because I got bounce back faith. Somebody ought to confess that over there. I got a bounce back faith. I'm being bounced back from my trials and tribulations. I'm being bounced back from all of the problems that I've been through. I'm being bounced back from this season that has hurt me. I'm being bounced back today. Lord, have mercy. God has you in a process to prepare you for purpose. And let me go back to process real quick. And I just need you to let me slow down and let me get this in your spirit. What is the pro What in the process is God trying to teach you? I need you to think about that for a moment. That's why I'm going to slow down. I need you to think about what in your current process is God trying to teach you? Because there's always a lesson in the process. Oh, yeah. Every process has a lesson that will prepare you for purpose. Oh, yeah. Is it patience? Mm, Lord have mercy. Help me in the name of Jesus. Is it humility? Is it maturity? Is it developing trust and building faith? And, and here it is. And this is what you got to understand. God will allow some problems to come your way. Because watch this, if he blocked every problem, you wouldn't understand how the problem solved. Somebody missed that. It, it, as a parent, if, if I do everything for you, you're never going to learn for yourself. And, and this is one thing that, that, oh, I just feel it in my spirit. I, I really don't want to talk about it, and I'm not going to get the specifics. But God's saying over those last messages that we were talking about learning how to say no, he says, I'm allowing people to ask you so you'll learn how to say it. Oh, yeah. so, so, so let's be honest, God, God, why won't you just block them from asking me? No, I'm going to allow them to ask you so you can learn how to say it. Come on now. Some, some of y'all y'all got silver. You, no, no ain't a hard word to say, but you, 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 you're struggling. <laughs> he said, no, you're going to get it out today. Either you're going to get it out or watch this. You're going to allow a responsibility to come on, upon you that is not ordained for you in this season. That is one lesson that I learned, Lord have mercy. He's saying, I, the reason why I'm teaching you these things, I'm going to allow some problems in your life so you'll know how to deal with it. And sometimes all it takes is for you to release the answer that God gave you. You got the answer, you just holding on to it. You got the no in your spirit, you just holding on to it. And, and Lord have mercy, they were singing this song, let go of the no. <laughs> I felt that it must be. Let go of the no. 
Because you, you ain't hurting nobody feelings. God says, I'm leaving the act. I'm, I'm leaving. Because sometimes I, and I'm like, God, I need you to give me answer. He said, I'm leaving the decision up to you. It's up to you whether you want to do it or not. Who am I talking to today? I'm not I'm not saying that the leadership of the Holy Spirit is not going to give us the answer. All I'm saying is God will sit back and watch and see how we make decisions. Because he already said, I've taught you how to say it. You just need to release it. So sometimes, watch this, your process may be teaching you certain things that are going to prepare you for the next level. Because when you get to that next level, it's still going to be people asking you for stuff. And if you haven't learned how to say it then, Lord have mercy. Because watch this, they're going to be, it's the, the, the weight is going to be a little bit heavier. Lord have mercy. Because if, if you don't say no, watch this, the, the burden, ooh, Lord have mercy, the burden is going to be a little bit heavier at the next level. So the burden ain't that bad right now. But if you don't say no at the next level, and I just feel like this is ministering to somebody. I didn't plan to say this. If you, Lord have mercy, if you don't learn how to say it now, you are not going to be prepared for when they ask you then. And, and Lord have mercy, if you never release it, it's going to burden you and it's going to break yes. you down. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes, watch this, uh, God's going to say, okay, I see you need to go back to this other level. Mm. I thought you learned the lesson. Mm. No, no, you, you actually didn't. You're backtracking. Every, every Christian backtracks. Oh, yes, he do. Oh, yeah. Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. Even with, I don't know too much about clay, but I understand that sometimes uh, mud is attached to clay. Oh, yes, it is. And every believer got some mud in them. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh your, your pastor, you may think your pastor is pure and all and righteous and all this and that. Yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, but even pastors got oh, mud. <laughs> I don't know what Pastor Cody is laughing at. And that's why I watch this. They, they must go through the shaking process. Who am I talking to today? Y'all so missed that. The, the, in order to get the, the clay and, and it's attached to mud, it must go through that shaking or that screening process to get the mud out. And, and see, that, that shaking season is to get the mud out. Because that mud is sticking to you. Mm, Lord have mercy. I felt like I could preach that right now, but I'm in. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Everybody got some mud in them, but God is allowing the shaking to get the mud off. So the clay, Lord have mercy, has potential. The clay, Lord have mercy, must go through a process. And the clay, Lord have mercy, serves a purpose. I am purpose. Mm. I felt that in my spirit. That, that, that may not even be for you. That, that was for me. I am purpose. Lord. I made it on the wheel, so I got purpose. You want me? And that's why sometimes you just got to remind yourself. It was a reason why God woke me up today. Because he saw something in me. He saw potential in me. He saw purpose in me. He saw something. He saw something of birth and value. So God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. And starting me on my way. Because you saw something in me. I made it on the potter's wheel. Lord have mercy. And, and, and I just feel this in my spirit. The Father says, it, my will and my word work hand in hand. My will and my word must have a working relationship. Are y'all with me so far? He says, my will will have you spinning, but my word will do the shaping. That's why I got to remind you of my word sometimes. That's why I got to remind you that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither have entered into the heart of man. I got to remind you of what it says in Romans 8 that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I got to remind you of what it says in Jeremiah 29 that I have the plans of you, plans for you to prosper and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. That, that will has you spinning, but the word has you shape and the bible says lord have mercy that his word shall not return unto him void for it shall accomplish what he sent it to accomplish that's why the bible says that the word is powerful it's quick 
is active and is sharper than any two-edged sword and is piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's why I got to remind you that you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I got to remind you that though he slayed me, that's why I got to remind you that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That will has you spinning but the word has you being shaped and molded and folded into what God has declared for you to be. God has to remind you sometimes that his grace is sufficient. God has to remind you sometimes that his love is unconditional. God has to remind you sometimes that his peace is perfect and it surpasses all understanding. That wheel has you spinning, but the spinning gives him room to shake. Lord have mercy. I, I wish I had a potter up here. I, I just wish somebody was up here just working and, and doing something. Lord have mercy. Somebody buy me, go on Amazon and buy me a potter's wheel. I'm going to learn. <laughs> He said, my will, that's why he says, you got, you got, to, you got to keep my word close to you. I'm, I'm telling you, that will, that will will have you busy. Who am I talking? That will sometimes will have you confused. That will will have you really seeking the Lord. He said, but while the will is spinning, the word is shaping. Jeremiah says, the clay has potential. Somebody confessed that I have potential. I have he says the clay must go yes, through God. a process. Say I must go through a process. process. The third thing he says, the clay serves a purpose. Somebody say I have purpose. I, have purpose. I thank you, Lord God. Let's move right into prayer. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for my potential today. I thank you, Lord God, that even though people have underestimated me, I thank you, Lord God, that you can see through my mistakes, that you can see through my failures, that you can see through my disappointments and see that I still have potential. I thank you, Lord God, that I made it on your will. I thank you, Lord God, that I made it on your will today. And I know, Heavenly Father, that you are applying pressure and you're rolling me and folding me and doing all of these different things. But I just, I'm grateful to be on the wheel. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I'm grateful to be on your wheel today. As uncomfortable as it is, as inconvenient as it is, as stressful as it is, sometimes I'm worried about what's going on. But the, the Bible says, don't worry, just pray. Lord have mercy. I felt that in my, it was simple, but I felt that in my, stop worrying and just pray. Because while you're spinning on the wheel, he said, my hands are still on you. Woo, Lord have mercy. My hand is still on you right now. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling you right now, allow God to spin you in this season. Allow God to shake you in this season. Allow God to remove some things out of your life in this season. And when he uh, removes it, it's going to be some things that you need to focus on. It's going to be some things that remain in your life. And he said, those very things are going to be your blessing. Lord have mercy. Those very things that have remained in your life, those very people that have remained in your life, he's going to raise them up to bless you through every single thing that you've been through. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I thank you today, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient. I thank you, Lord God, that your power is made perfect in the midst of our weaknesses. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that, that, that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that even though it may not seem like it, that you see the potential that I'm the head and not the tail. You see the potential that I'm above and not beneath. You see the potential that I'm moving mountains and I'm doing your work today, God. Don't ever let nobody doubt you. I thank you, Lord God, for the process. I thank you, Lord God, that I made it on the wheel. 
So Heavenly Father, we lift this prayer up to you right now, God. I thank you, Lord God, that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. I feel it in my spirit that God says those very things that you've been praying about, I'm preparing them for your next season. Ooh, I felt somebody needed to receive that. The very things that you've been praying for, I'm preparing for you to receive them in this next season. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I thank you. If you would just put at least one hand in the eye right now. Heavenly Father, this hand represents, Lord God, us letting go of some of the things that we need to let go in this season. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those people to release any worries, release any doubt, release anything, Heavenly Father, that is hindering them from progressing in your will today. But this hand also represents, Lord God, a hand, Lord God, that will receive. Mm. Lord, have mercy. It's a hand that releases and a hand that receives. And Heavenly Father, we receive your favor upon our life right now in the name of Jesus. We receive those blessings right now in the name of Jesus. We receive your word today in the name of Jesus. We receive your promises that you have declared over our life. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Every single thing that you have in store for me, I shall receive it. And I don't want to miss no blessing, Lord God. I don't even want to miss the small blessings, the small things that you're blessing me with, the things that we take for granted. I want every single thing that you have declared over my life. I thank you, Lord God. Right now, just start praying for your family right now. Start praying for your children right now. Start interceding for your grandchildren right now. I'm not just standing in the gap for myself, Lord. I'm standing in the gap for my children. I'm standing in the gap for my grandchildren. I'm standing in the gap for my nieces, my nephews, my aunts and uncles and cousins. I'm standing in the gap for my brothers and sisters in Christ today. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for your word of deliverance. I thank you, Lord God, for a word of salvation. I thank you, Lord God, for a word of healing. Somebody in the house today that needs a touch from the Lord. You need the potter's touch today, Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, right now we pray, Heavenly Father, that you release your touch upon somebody's body, that you manifest your healing like never before, that you touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and manifest your healing in every single inch, every single centimeter of their body. Release your healing right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your son that you've raised up. I thank you, Lord God, that your son that sits on the throne. I thank you, Lord God, for your son that is sitting beside you at your right hand, the authority hand. I thank you, Lord God, that he is our high priest. Hey, Lord have mercy. He is our most high priest, and he's interceding on our behalf. So I thank you, Lord God, that we have a high priest who knows how to sympathize. That he knows what we've been through and he knows what we're going through. Oh, yes, sir. You are ready. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sometimes, just, just, sometimes you just have a shout and you just got to release the shout. Don't be embarrassed to shout. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those people, Lord God, that may be tuning in online right now and may tune online later, Lord God. I pray for those people right now that you manifest, Lord God, your blessings upon them in this next season. That you're preparing them, Lord God, for their next moment. You're preparing their family for their next moment. I pray for the person right now that is feeling burdened right now, Lord God, that is worrying right now, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they begin to seek you and your kingdom and put you first. And you're standing your word, Lord God, that everything else shall fall in line. Everything else shall be done unto you. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray right now. If, if, if you feel like you're on the potter's wheel and you've been spinning these last couple of seasons, I just want you to raise your hand just for a moment. You can put them down. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those people right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you remind them of what it says in your word. That even though, Heavenly Father, that they are going through all of these trials and tribulations, Lord God, your word is faithful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, God. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is faithful. Yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you send a word that encourages yes, them when they're down, Lord God. Thank you, God. 
I pray, Heavenly Father, for that person right now that is going to their job every day, Lord God, and they don't want to be there. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give them, Lord God, a sense, a wave of encouragement right now in the name of Jesus. That, that, that you give them, Heavenly Father, the encouragement to push through, to persevere, Lord God, through these days and weeks and months, Lord God. But when it's time for them to transition, give them your word, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those people, Lord God, who may be going through depression right now. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those people, Lord God, who may be going through doubt right now. I pray, Heavenly Father, right now that your word lifts them up in the name of Jesus. That you remind them, Lord God, that you have more in store for them. I pray, Heavenly Father, for that person right now who's, who's dealing with jealousy and envy, Lord God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for that person, Lord God, that may want to get some type of vengeance back. God says, I want to remind you of what it says in, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. For even though they meant it for evil, God says, I'm going to use it for your good. They may have meant it for evil. But God says, I'm going to use it for your good. Lord, have mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for leading us to Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah saw that the potter broke that back down the piece of clay. And I just feel this analogy. God is telling somebody he's breaking you back down to build you back up. He's breaking you back. He, he didn't get rid of the clay. He says he broke it back down with the intentions of building it back up. We thank you, Lord God, for our breaking down and our building up. The breaking down, was a, it was a reason for the breaking down. Lord, have mercy. There was a reason, Lord God, why you broke us down. But I thank you, Lord God, in these next seasons, Lord God, you're building me back up. I thank you, Lord God, for everybody that raised their hand. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you release your word unto them, Lord God. Your word of encouragement and your word of faith. We lift this prayer up to you. In our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen.